archetype of perfection, thy magnificent spanning of the universal consciousness exists, it is, and the Lord God liveth. I, Zadkiel, of the sacred violet flame am come, and I am come in the name of him who has said unto you, Ye are the children of my heart. God has created you in order that you should be the inheritors of his kingdom. Hence, as I come tonight, it is to bring to your blessed consciousness a greater measure of awareness of the violet flame, which is able by the power of God to transmute all shadowed substance into the purity of the great cosmic light. Oh, what a blessing then is yours, my children, my brethren, and blessed angels of all bands, when mankind or anyone is able to avail themselves of the correct use of the violet flame that they may enjoy once again the boundlessness of the spirit of life, that they may feel the meaning of infinite freedom, that they may recognize the passions of God to convey his love to mortal men. For I tell you that the problems of mankind exist almost solely in the eyes. For it is the eyes that see good and evil, and it is the eyes that provide consciousness with awareness of distortion and recognition of darkness and shadow. The eyes are the orbs of perception, and the eyes perceive not always that which is, but they perceive nonetheless. And while their perceptions are at times the grossness of mortal men's unfortunately maladjusted consciousness that is always prone to perceive evil, the eyes of God are ever luminously by the light that never fails perceiving only good. Hence, as I come to you tonight, it is to bring to you some of the awareness of the glory of God some of the awareness of the power of God, for you could not tonight contain all that I am bringing, and I expect that a great deal of it will pass by your blessed auras as a swiftly moving wind propelled by the Holy Spirit, the radiant fire breath of God. But that which passes by is also your inheritance, as well as that which you will be able to contain within the blessed cup of your own soul. For the chalice of the soul is a cup of tenderness. It is a cup of tenderness when it is filled with the tenderness of God. And when the soul with its solar consciousness is inverted according to purpose and moves outward through those blessed eyes of perception when they are destined by mortal thought and feeling to see and perceive evil, then there is a thick veil of darkness that covers all things, and mankind, unfortunately, at those moments does not perceive the blessedness of just being. What have I said? I have spoken of just being. Do you know the meaning of just being? Well, precious ones of the light, so many times individuals feel impelled to act when they ought to be still, and impelled to be still when they ought to act. And the power of discernment of the Holy Spirit that directs that blessed consciousness to know in divine order, by the law of grace, just when to act is the blessedness of the whole I-Spirit. 
It is the blessedness of the eyes of perception washed by the radiant tears of God which take away those unfortunate creations of mortal thought and feeling that actually are like a little piece of impediment in the channels that lubricate the eyes. We want you to know then that the fire of God is always coursing through the veins of the spiritual eye. Hence, many artists have painted pictures of the great ones and members of our angelic band as having upon their forehead a pulsing, rising flame. For the eye of divine perception is an eye of fire. It perceives and sees the power of transmutation. Oh, blessed transmutation, would to God that men would kiss the altar of thy flame even more than to kiss the blarney stone of man's own cupidity. But human beings will sometimes cavort when they ought to be serious and be serious when they ought to be happy and joyous. We therefore pray for the spirit of grace to descend upon you tonight that you may understand the feeling of the angelic hosts, that you may understand how it is quite easy once you will accept it to let the pressure of God grace in your feeling worlds expand the blessed feeling of God happiness through the very pores of your skin and the pores of the mind and the blessed pores even of your hearts until the world will actually feel the bathing of your love and happiness as it flows forth in the manner that it does through that blessed being, the God of happiness. Do you, precious ones of the light, Understand how that Lord Ling, who was that blessed being Moses, is able today to let the great joy of God happiness flood forth through his being. Therefore, when I came here tonight, I made a special petition to the Lord of the first ray to carry to the karmic board my request that Lord Ling be permitted during my address to descend with his angels of happiness that you might be able to feel the meaning once again of just being joyous as a child that did not have a pocket full of worries and concerns as to just what is your destiny. If you would only then let go of the concerns and worries that do not in any way bring you release or a feeling of God happiness into your worlds, then, precious ones, the flames of God can do their perfect work and strip your worlds of those feelings of over-concern for the doings of men who in the gall of bitterness and the shades of darkness are purveyors of hate and human discord where they ought by divine decree instead to always convey the feeling of infinite love and the feeling of infinite joy. Do you know, precious ones, we could, if we wanted to, actually assume roles of dramatists. And we could stand here upon the stage and show you what a sorry lot human beings are, almost in the manner of Moliere. For we could cause some of you to laugh out loud at the silly antics that human beings engage in, thinking that they are finding some relief for their poor being. They often bring themselves into a state of worse entanglement because they do not understand what it means to have grace. I stress again that grace is a result of God's gift to man when it functions through an individual who is washed and bathed in the violet transmuting flame of freedom. Freedom then from limitation, freedom then from fear, freedom then from worry and over-concern and a commitment of the soul and total being into the hands of the infinite God. And precious ones of the light, seeing you are ultimately going to commit yourself anyway to him, one way or the other, would it not be a much greater boon of freedom to yourselves if you would do so right here and now and resolve never again throughout the balance of this embodiment to take up the cross of worry and concern either for yourselves 
or others upon this planetary body. Whenever you see conditions that warrant some action, understand that your worry will not produce a release for the individuals or for yourselves, but the forthright call to your own divine God presence to send forth its illumined Christed intelligence into your world and demand that that intelligence shall actually call into action whatever powers in the universe are the requirement of that hour to produce healing of body, mind, or spirit. For God wants the whole man to be the radiant perfection and perception that he himself is. And the eyes of the spirit are the most important blessings that you can have. The eyes that enable you to gaze upon mortals created in the image of God that are actually endowed with immortality and see through the shoddy activities of mortal doings to the precious soul that is within where the glory of God and the face of Christed identity shines forth as the Father himself demands in the heart of the great central Son. Individuals then have before the presence and the heart of the presence in the great central Son, the radiant angel of their presence ever beholding his face. When individuals then turn against those who are followers of the light and speak ill of them and discuss them privately or publicly with a view to bringing them into ill repute to others, they are creating a fearsome karmic activity which always returns to the very heart and mind of the individual sending out that vibratory action. I tell you, precious ones, if you could see how faithful the laws of God are, the laws of his energy in always carrying out the mandates that you set into motion, you would realize how utterly important it is that you should be free from all feelings of criticism, condemnation, or judgment of individuals, whether they are perfect children of the light or whether they are individuals who actually do walk in darkness. You cannot, precious ones of the light, by a feeling of criticism, condemnation, or judgment of any individual, bring one ounce of freedom to that soul or one ounce of freedom to your own. Only by recognition of the God intent to free the earth can you actually manifest the purity of the divine consciousness that not only sets that blessed one free from those errors which he has made, but also goes out and returns full circle into your own world to bring you that blessed feeling of God freedom and God happiness which you crave and should have in manifestation. We come then tonight to call to the God presence within each and every one of you and ask that divine presence to produce the miracle of perfect health in your bodies, minds, and beings and to create in you the patience to bear those crosses which seem karmically to be thrust upon you that you may understand that the love of God can also be in his chastening, that you can understand that those whom God loves he sometimes also chastens that he may cause them to bring forth greater fruit by reason of the pruning of the action of the laws of karma as it brings to man a renewed opportunity to renew his vows made at inner levels before his descent into the flesh form which will enable him to restore the boundaries of the old temples of consonance and concord in his precious life stream. I, Zadkiel, say then, now is the hour, O blessed Lord Ling, to let the power of God happiness sound out. Let it ring out the bells of good cheer to mankind, regardless of what happens to them. Do you know, precious ones, individuals sometimes fear the change called death. Let me say to you then tonight that in some cases, this is actually a hastening of themselves on to God, a hastening of themselves on to the spirit of Christ's purity for some individuals when they have finished their course and are once again returned to the higher octaves of light are actually cut free from a great deal of pain and suffering where they are taken to temples of light and given the most magnificent instruction that possibly can be permitted by cosmic law. These individuals, then when they do not ascend, returning to the scenes of life, are able in many cases to finish their course in a more beautiful manner 
simply because they made their exit at a time when the sufferings of the flesh had not reached the point of utter crucifixion. If men and women then would understand that the all-knowing mind of God does choose the best time for the entrances and exits of men, they would not themselves suffer that over-concern concerning others or themselves, but they would commit themselves to the keeping of God, knowing that no harm can befall the soul who is actually guided by the Holy Spirit that places their entire trust in Him and recognizes the power of the violet transmuting flame to produce a field of freedom from all fear, all shadow, and all shame. The Blessed Holy Comforter is ever your guide. The Blessed Holy Comforter stands by your side, ready to produce the miracle of the descending fire breath of God, the power that speaks to the soul and saith, Be free, my son, be free. If individuals then will accept it, they will have their freedom. They can have their freedom now. They need not wait for it. It can be a freedom that throughout the balance of their life can always simply be these words, Father, into thy hands I commend my spirit. This need not occur at the very close of a person's embodiment. It can be a daily commitment of the soul to God, a daily commitment that floods forth through them the power of transmutative action that changes the conditions in their world into light and brings them the great buoyancy and freedom of the violet transmuting flame. I am Zadkiel, Lord of the violet fire, by divine decree and divine grace. I decree then for every one of you that will accept it, a mighty tide of cosmic release, the blessing and buoyancy of the violet flame into your worlds, the compassion of the cosmic Christ into your worlds, the outflow of the cosmic Christ into civilization, and the activity of the violet flame from my retreat in Cuba to help and assist in redeeming that island from the tyranny now imposed upon the people there. And I decree that it shall also go forth in St. Germain's name to activate those principles of holy freedom throughout the universe of this earth, throughout that sector of manifestation known as Terra. O oh, blessed violet flame, go forth. O oh, blessed violet flame, now free. O oh, blessed violet flame, go forth. Help all mankind to see that God himself directs the flame. It everywhere ascends. The souls of men by grace are free. His cosmic mind will send the glory of his cosmic grace, the power of truth made free, the power of light that makes the soul to breathe the air that he, the cosmic Christ, did send. Oh, won't you accept it now and be free? Won't you take it from the hand of an archangel and realize that Lord Ling, the God of happiness, sings in the violet flame from this hour forth? For we have recorded the notes of his happiness banner and we have established it in the violet transmuting flame. Henceforth, we shall now from tonight on call the violet transmuting flame the violet singing flame, for it retains within it permanently an activity of infinite harmony that will help the soul to know the harmony of God. In his blessed name, I thank you.
precious ones of the never-failing light of God. Most of you will recall the story of the Pied Piper of Hamlin. You will recall how that the children were led into the mountain which closed over them and took them from their homes and family. We want then today to call to your attention in a natural objectivity the fact that the children of this world are today we are the educational system of the world having their minds and consciousness distorted and the correct meaning of true culture robbed from them. As I readied myself to address this blessed fraternity of the Spirit, I asked myself what valiant offering I could make that would enable you to perform in a better manner your service to life. And I have concluded that above all things I must seek to convey to you the meaning of spiritual culture which is being robbed from the children of this age the reality of the great white brotherhood, the wonders of the hidden kingdom, these are not being made known to the children of men. And you must understand that there is a very real, a tangible veil of misqualified substance that drops over their minds and consciousness, that this veil possesses the quality of psychic hypnosis, and that when they are under its banal influences, they are unable to appreciate the realities of life, for they simply do not see them. What they cannot see or perceive is not real unto them. And therefore the world of appearance, the world of form, is all that they have, and it is a straw image. A little flame tossed upon this image would soon destroy it, leaving them without reality or birthright. What a tragedy then has occurred in this breach in the transmission of spiritual knowledge to the age that is to come. For the transcendence of divine grace seeks to pass from one age to the other that cosmic tutoring which will enable each age to advance and progress in the knowledge of the sacred laws. Today the ancient mystery schools are the sole repositories with the exception of a few books of the ancient mystery. Yet the true significant conveyance can only best be made by word of mouth and by the power of a real example. Some of you will recall my own experiences in living in this land and in having children here. 
which fortunately sought the things of the Spirit. Some of you have had the misfortune of having your children turn away from the great spiritual truths that have thrilled your hearts and souls. And you ask yourself the question, why have you lost them to the Moloch of the world? We want you to understand that there is a tendency for mankind to claim that which comes through them as their own and to feel that that which does not come through them is not their own. We would alter this concept for the keepers of the flame this day by saying that all children are the children of God when they rightly evaluate their immortal birthright. And therefore, they need not be born through your own body as the fruit thereof. For they come from the heart of God and are the offspring of the eternal, even as you are. Therefore, the wayward children of the earth, as well as those who are devotees of higher things, are both your children. As such, those of you who know and can assume the obligation of cosmic sponsorship should understand that when you seek to impart by spiritual means the blessing of deliverance from the shrouds of evil hypnosis and darkness that hangs as a heavy screen over their minds, when you perform the services to the fraternity to cut mankind free from darkness and despair, it creates a more than ordinary activity on behalf of these children of God who have gone astray. It may help greatly if in your visualizations and service you will realize that nothing done for God and man is really vain. For whether or not the fruit is always self-evident or forthcoming with immediacy is not the important part but rather that the deeds be done, knowing that the hands of the angelic hosts will reach out perforce into the world and minister unto men because you keyed the energy and released it. I do not deny that in addition to the spiritual service that you render, some of you are placed in a position where you can either influence or direct and in some cases directly intervene in activities which can then be changed from darkness to light by reason of the service you render. We are certain that when the hour appears and it is made known to you that your service is needed, you will stand ready because you will today desire to create that readiness of mind and heart which will reach out into the world domain and bless the children of the sun that are temporarily in a position of obscurity where the divine light does not appear unto them. In the culture of the past, there has occurred a great breach where the magnificent areas in song and the beautiful tone poems of cosmic prose that men ought to pay allegiance to have fallen somewhat into disrepute or they have become commercialized by the commercial activities of the world. But I want you to know that in some cases, in fact in many, we have even given of our love and our blessings to commercial interests solely to keep alive the blessed, magnificent concepts of God which are created within the harmonics of the sound itself and as the engrammatic 
manifestation of a higher law brought them through music and art into manifestation. The great white brotherhood is so tangible and real, so magnificent in its outreach that it is often discredited by mankind who seem to feel that a hoax is being perpetrated upon them because of the actual will-o'-the-wisp attitude which we seem to have at times adapted. I reference the actual spiritual fraternity of the Great White Brotherhood, which itself is actually partially manifest in form through some of our initiates and workers, but is mainly manifest in the higher octaves of light. We deliberately see to it that no tangible manifestation of our inner activities is generally made known. And we conceal for a purpose because the world has always cast down in her state of ignorance and unknowing the great cosmic blessings that have been conveyed from higher octaves through their misunderstandings and misconceptions of what constitutes a true activity of the spirit. They have always been suspicious of mankind, suspecting that there was some commercial venture behind it all. We who understand the cosmic law, who are aware of the questionings of the world, realize that today, if the tax collectors were to make inquisition against the Master Jesus for his act in producing a golden coin from the fish's mouth, it would itself create a technical and legal problem for him. Let those of you then who have a higher understanding cognize the need for the brotherhood to be somewhat clandestine in its internal functions and to see to it that you do understand the need to bless, to father, and to direct our activities through such activities as the Summit Lighthouse. For here, through the surrender of the life streams to the Divine Presence, we are able to bring about such altering in the structure of mortal thought as will ultimately produce a divine key that will open a divine doorway into octaves of light, not just for those of you who are presently receiving the blessings of our release, but for the mankind to come, for the ages to come, when spiritual knowledge of the right sort will be much in demand. Let me say to you that there are many moot questions in mortal consciousness, questions that remain unanswered, and some of them must of necessity be unanswered for a time because they enable the student to search more diligently for the answer so that when it is forthcoming, not only will that question be answered, but many more, and the blessings of true understanding conveyed, not prematurely, when sometimes truth can be jarring, but in due order out of the fullness of time. For the manifestation of the full luminosity of the Christ consciousness in many individuals' worlds would lead them to such a state of distraction and fear as to prevent them from actually doing the work God intends. Therefore, there is always the tempering of the shorn wind so that mankind are able to recognize that God cares for the lambs. As the wind is shorn of her strength, the shorn lamb is not herself the victim of a malignant wind, but of a careful one. Let all understand then 
and correctly so, that the revelations of Christ's intelligence are released in differing cadences to different individuals in order that they may have time to clean up with the violet flame and the spiritual activities of service their karmic outreach. That the weight of their personal karma may itself be diminished and mitigated by correct service to life, would it not be a tremendous activity if all of your karma, blessed ones, were to descend upon you all at once and demand amortization? Do you not see how that God in his infinite grace has limited chastisement so that even when you seem to be oppressed and weighed down by many burdens and concerns, if you will be honest, you will recognize that God has not given you more than you can bear, even at those moments when it seems so. In most cases, there are provisions made for a way of escape from the oppressing burden. And we want you to know that what is being done for you is being done also for the world. The world has simply interfered with the divine plan. They have set up obstacles and created karmic webs, nets of deceit and confusion that have caused them to suffer unnecessarily in so far as the great cosmic law is concerned. I want today then to remind you that behind every objective manifestation there is a spiritual counterpart, a fourth dimensional consciousness that gives the true qualitative essence of the manifestation. Whether it be a building your physical bodies, or even a thought, there is a vibratory quality behind it which takes into account motive and intent. When you deal then with manifestations of nature, such as a daffodil, a narcissus, a lily of the valley, or a tall tree, there are also gracious intents of God manifest in the fourth dimensional level. The late Luther Burbank was able to peer behind this veil and in his penetrations thereof to understand how to alter the structure within the framework of cosmic law. But we want to impress upon you today that mortal thoughts and feelings do exert their banal as well as corrective and blessing influences upon the kingdom of nature. So that in one sense, the statement that you have a green thumb may be indicative of the fact that your spirits are cooperating with God and the elemental evolution. The responses then of the tiny elementals that comes to you through the bountiful manifestation of the flowers of the earth and of the growing things is the return of the currents of your love sent out to the kingdom of nature. And this creates a blessing that is somewhat intangible that cannot be weighed or measured in dollars and cents. But in the return of the blessings of Almighty God to the world order of things. Now the brotherhood is concerned with every area of mankind's life. We are especially concerned for the youth. But there has been a tendency in the past on the part of many to think that our concerns for youth bypass age. Therefore, we welcome the concept that in your forthcoming university, you will make available to people of all ages the possibility of higher learning 
setting into correct perspective the knowledge of God in a most practical way that will enable mankind in times to come to recreate in the ever-ascending spiral those elements of the golden age which will bring about not a chastening of mankind but a permanent perennial blessing to all. I come to you then this day to say that the manifestations of the great white brotherhood's activities are the most thrilling reading material upon the planet if all of them could be recorded. For example, the Master K-17, he himself and his operators upon the planet are often engaged in activities of a far more thrilling nature than those communicated to you in the James Bond mysteries and those current thrillers which mankind peruse so avidly with so little return or benefit to their souls. We want to tell you that in the glorious scientific kingdom of nature, so many wonderful things are being prepared for mankind that eye has not seen, that ear has not heard, that has not yet entered into the heart of mankind, that we are certain that with each one of these blessed revelations, your souls will begin to glow with ever new cosmic thrills as to the manifestation of the immortal intelligence for and on behalf of all of you and of all mankind. For the brotherhood seeks to enrich in countless lives and we see that youth because of its potential longevity is able to remain longer upon the planetary body and therefore needs the requirement of adult love and guidance. When there is a breach in that adult love and guidance when the youth of the world feel that there is what they have termed a generation gap in existence, it shows the selfishness of the age which has nothing else to hand down to its posterity except its actual acquisitions. Acquisitions of better homes and automobiles, acquisitions of more opulence and riches of a material kind acquisition of higher learning for the purposes of acquiring greater funds and for glamorizing the mortal potential. We who understand then the conveyance of great culture call to the attention of all of you that the grandeur of the master artists of the past has been the greatest heritage which the world has ever known the culture of true song, the culture of the song crafters, the culture of the true poets, the culture of the true artisans. This has enriched mankind far beyond that which has been brought about by simple scientific explorations. For science alone, without the rule of humanities, is herself unable to steady the ungovernable emotions of mankind, which as they ride over the track of order, create a constant impulse to chaos and discord. We come then this day into the form consciousness of mankind to create a new and inward delight in the law of God and in the things that provide food for the soul. For the nourishment of the soul is the greatest requirement of every age and the keepers of the flame fraternity should understand that the culture of the divine is imbued in the old culture of the elder gods. This has been handed down from generation unto generation in part but is intermingled with those dark and blackened threads of mortal feeling and treachery, of debauchery and discord that have impugned the service of the immortals that sought to render justice to mankind and tranquility. I am come then today to generate a new passion within you that in memory of the service of Florence Nightingale, 
you may realize that the woman with the lamp appears in the land. The lamp is the lamp of knowledge and the woman is the cosmic mother. The knowledge of the spiritual laws that are advancing and progressive is the light to the youth of the world. It is the torch which will put into perspective and balance all else that will enable the youth of the coming age as well as those who now exist to appreciate no end the glory of God that is hidden behind the appearance world, the world of form. I am come then to bring significantly into manifestation the symbol of the golden cosmic lamp that will produce when rubbed by the power of energy and devotion the manifestation of the cosmic genie, the Aladdin that will produce the marvels of cosmic law by cosmic automation, by cosmic intensification, by cosmic release of the violet flame into all areas of life to create a release of mortal densification and the freeing of the energies of mankind to engage themselves into the teeth of oppressive problems that the gears and wheels of life may move by the impulse of cosmic love, that the flow of culture and industry upon the planet may solve all of the many seemingly insoluble problems of mortality and ultimately bring man to the place where his destiny will be clear before his mind and every act of the bending of the bow of energy will be for the production of the glory of God and the glistening radiance upon the face of humanity will bring about the sense of cosmic peace that as a band of light around the forehead of man will enable the cosmic flame to arise in radiant pulsation in full vision of all. Then the distraught manifestations that presently appear upon the faces of humanity as the tensions and despairs of this age will have themselves ceased. They will be replaced by the hand of the angels smoothening out the wrinkles and problems of mankind and opening up the cosmic doorways into the world of radiant cosmic adventure that is the culture of the age to come. Draped around you now in the midst of all your discord, the raveling and unraveling blueprints of heaven descend. They come with all of their powerful cosmic energies, with the love of the cosmic mother and the culture of the divine man-child. They pour out and unravel. They come from those great spindles in the higher octaves of the brotherhood, such as in the Grand Teton Retreat and others throughout the world. And the marvelous activity of cosmic energy that is released accompanied by the ministrations of the angelic host is an outpouring to bring to all mankind in this age the glory that was of old, the realm of heaven herself. You have heard of the city four square and of the streets paved with gold. We want you to know that the golden intent of heaven that comes forth through an endowment of the radiant mind of Christ is itself the fashioning power by which there will be formed as the malleability of man's spirit permits the industry of heaven here upon earth. And when all is accomplished, the fiats of God will be complete in the sounding of that trumpet, the kingdoms of this world have become the kingdoms of our Lord and of his Christ, and all is complete brotherhood and light. With this thought and the advancement of the inner activities of the great white brotherhood, which must hold the veil of mystery over much of her activities, I take my leave of you today, knowing that the imprint of my internal feelings and desires for all will not be lost upon an objective student body who can understand that we are real and tangible, conveying the spiritual sense of our love into mortal manifestation and tangibility through the ministrations of your hearts your heads and your hands. I thank you.
Yes, Lord, thou God of beauty, whose sonorous roaring in the sea does speak to man of the power of nature and of nature's God. Blessed be thy name, the power to activate universal principles of nature in the world and the power to say unto those principles with the voice of universal authority and love, peace, be still. Tonight I come to you out of the domain of light to speak to individual hearts concerning the cosmic image, the image of the divine man. And as I speak to you, I behold the thought of God concerning manifestation, and it is as though my knees do quake, and I am awed by the principle of the divine conferment of grace, whereby God has sought to bestow the treasure house of his own being and the holy knowledge by which creation was made unto man made in his own image, that man may learn to do well and to not only take dominion over the earth, but also over the heaven world from whence he descended. I, Cosco, in the name of God, speak to the people of the earth, even those who are with and those who are without initiation. Beautiful is the divine image and the face of God imprinted upon the mountains and also the fingers of God that as tall pines point to the heavens and the flaming orbs that there express the pressure of divinity in instellar space. How beautiful is the combination of wholeness, the blueness of the sky fading away with the end of the day at sunset and renewing itself afresh with each dawn, paling also toward the zenith and bringing the glory of the noontide sun to full magnificence as symbolical of cosmic knowledge to the soul that drinks in the fragrances of the universal mind and understands that it is the Father's good pleasure to give the kingdom unto all who are ready and willing to receive it. Tonight I come then mindful of the vision of the divine image the majesty of the universal and the heavenly hosts, he who maketh his legions to go forth to do his will, as Enoch, the seventh from Adam, did prophecy, saying, Behold, the Lord cometh with ten thousand of his saints. Let all in their hearts then tonight relinquish all that is of the darkness, for there is no cornucopia of abundance in the darkness, but only in the light. For out of the light, abundance comes into manifestation and purity of purpose is born and the stillness of God in the soul speaks to the individual. Will you then tonight with me understand the need of the Father to caress the Son, to guide the Son's mind by the feelings of his own majestic thought, to reach out and extend into the domain of the heart's chalice the sacred fires of his love, to let the circles of universal regeneration pour forth and to see that the world is bathed in that regenerate light. Now we intensify the action of the sacred fire and we do it in the name of the universal image. We bring about the impact of pure love upon the soul now removed from that holy image by the discord and jangle of the outer world by the strange spirits of darkness that in their rebellion against God have seen fit to also attempt to take with them 
those among mankind who seek to clean escape from the errors in which these did live. O oh, beloved of the light, it is my desire tonight, and I have sought a majestic petition to the karmic board in fulfillment of that desire for and on behalf of all who are in attendance here, who will also within their heart flames make the call to God and believe the word that goeth forth to give them freedom tonight. I have made a call for you that you tonight during some portion of my address would be able to receive that wondrous state of perfection which existed before you ever made the first error in your manifestation. I have asked that the pure and beautiful light of the holy soul might shine forth, that you might see yourselves as you really were at that supreme moment of cosmic loveliness when born from the heart of your own I am presence, you went hopefully forth as a tender child into the native world of manifestation and flesh form, there to seek your fortunes as it were and the winning of your immortal laurels. At that moment when you parted with the majestic ones in the higher octaves of light, there was a moment of great sorrow, the type of sorrow that exists in heaven, the sorrow of the parting, the sorrow that is also the smile of hope, for we were also then crowned with a sense of the achievements that individuals must surely make. These were going forth, and one day they must needs graduate from the schoolhouse of mortal experience, wearing not only the majesty of the eternal Christ and the star of victory, but the laurels of meritorious accomplishment. Oh, how our hearts did flood forth the pang of parting with the hopes of the return. And when we sent you forth, one and all, when you were sent forth from the heart of your presence, when you were sent forth from the majesty of the cosmic law, as the heavenly host did gather, it was a supreme moment, and a moment in which also you individually yet share for that portion of your blessed selves that has never descended, but remains as the angel of your presence anchored in the heart of God, retains for you even at this supreme moment in manifestation in time the memory of that blessed event and the hope of the return of your blessed selves to the heart, the bosom of the Father, that you may receive the onus of his perfection and the weight of that light, which is the light of the Christ, the crown of life resting upon the Son who cometh back to the heart of God with his joyous crown of accomplishment singing the songs of the redeemed and understanding what it means to be one who has forsaken the shrouds of darkness for the magnificent immortality of the universal cosmic light. I then, Cusco, did petition that those of you who would make the call to your divine presence might have those few moments tonight of peace that come when the soul is stripped bare of all the accoutrements of the flesh and those things that you so hopefully engaged in that have not in any case brought you comfort or achievement, but rather a weight of oppression and darkness and shadow. We ask that those things may be temporarily set aside for you tonight so that the paeans of praise of the angelic host may be heard by you and you may understand that the troubled sea of man's emotional substance, the body of his flesh, thought, and desire may at last be stilled. And you may understand reverently and in awe what it means to feel the pressure of cosmic love and the hand of God resting upon you, that you may know those moments of beautiful peace which the Master Jesus sought as he went to the head of the ship and lay his head downward and rested in the arms of sleep while the billows did rage. We want you to understand that outer expression is often turbulent in this day and age because of the jangle of human discord and the momentums of darkness and interferences of negative forces from the astral plane with the manifestations of man's soul search here in the world of form. 
Won't you then tonight with me accept the boon which I have called forth for you by making the call for your own blessed selves to know that beautiful peace which the angelic host so long to bestow right while I am speaking to you and by the grace of Almighty God. Do you know what it will mean that we ourselves tonight might for a moment be able to rejoin in you all those glorious ideas of cosmic hope and aspiration which actually existed at that time when without the flesh form your naked spirits did dance in the presence of the living God with the flame of hope that represented the mastery of your worlds. O oh, precious ones of the light, how we now then recognize the possibility of this occurring once again when free from karmic advancements of a negative sort which actually lead you into the desire world and destroy your peace of mind you will be able to reclaim the beautiful power of God and all of those virtues and majestic appointments which constitute the Son of God, the living manifestation of the overcomer. Do you know what it means to be an overcomer? As you gaze around you upon mankind, caught up in the net of all types of psychic delusions manifesting in the world of form, do you realize that these are pursuing some element of peace without ever actually finding it. For the bottomless pit of world delusion that is the manifestation of world confusion takes the young people of this world as well as those who are considerably older as years go and causes them to pursue the shrouds of darkness and the thoughts that are the banal thoughts of fallen angels and discordant mankind that have come to them through the mental belt of the world in its lower order and have distorted the blessed nature of the divine man-child that was seeking to take form within them, putting out the divine flame, extinguishing hope and spiritual aspiration, and causing them to turn away from the light that is within to those outer conditions that are without, where man eventually finds that hopeless and destroyed, he sometimes comes to the brink of suicide or perdition. We are concerned then that men should understand that in God there is no attempt to destroy, but only an attempt to find more of that magnificent being which is the natural estate of man in its first primal order as it went forth in the Edenic manifestation in the early primary worlds here upon the planet before the coming of the laggards and when mankind were able to walk and talk with their spiritual mentors and feel the great power of God as it issued forth a resurrection flame, an ascension flame, the flames of God, the flames of hope, the flames of peace, the flames of security, the flames of divine and universal knowledge. Then God was not far from man, and you find the recording in the actual manifestations of the early Codex Leviticus, and you find it also in the writings the early writings of the manifestation of God, where you hear the manifestation of God going forth and saying, Adam, Adam, where art thou, Adam? And you find that Adam did not for a moment reply, and the voice of God went out in search of the Adamic creation as it began to turn away from the voice of the Spirit. Adam, Adam, where art thou, Adam? And mankind did hide themselves, and then their reply back unto God was, We were naked, and we hid ourselves from thee. And God spake unto them and said, How didst thou know that thou wert naked? Hast thou eaten of the fruit of the tree which I forbade unto thee? And so you see that the holy innocence of the divine man-child the innocence of God, the innocence of his own nature was destroyed in the creation. And when the innocence was destroyed and the spirit of the holy innocence was destroyed in manifestation, men went forth then and their hearts burned within them and darkness descended upon them. This came also into the act of procreation so that the early methods of procreation which were taught by the great sons of God, whereby the male and female did stand and face each other, 
holding up the palms of their hands and in the manner of the cremation of the mother of one of India's great sages by fire did cause to issue forth from their heart fires a manifestation of the negative and positive polarity until a full-blown man-child would come into the world of form created by the electronic essence and creative power of God over that. Then came the later manifestation of shame and darkness concerning the procreative act, and the immaculate concept was no more, but animalism and darkness and shame shrouded the manifestation of the sons of God, and hope was banished from the earth, and the flame of Eden went out as the two-edged sword of the word took command over all things according to the ancient decree of the brotherhood. So you see we draw back in allegorical form the mysteries of creation and show to you that there is in reality no shame in all of these things when man understands his right relationship with God for there is the possibility of the restoration of the former things as man understands the correct use of the sacred fire and is able once again to accomplish all tasks by the use of the sacred fire. For the four elements of earth, air, fire, and water, the four elements of earth, air, fire, and water are intended to be under the control and dominion of the natural man of the spirit. For the natural man of the spirit, the man who is quickened as the second Adam, who is the Lord from heaven, he is able to restore the boundaries and appointments of the old temple and create in man a realization of that which is holy and immaculate, of that which is pure and without spot and blemish, banishing the sense of sin which overtook David in his explanation, saying, In sin did my mother conceive me, you are able to find then that the true consciousness of the original Son of God cometh forth into manifestation, and the consciousness withal changes. For the word that went forth of old also, long ago, when Peter saw the sheep coming down out of heaven, with all of the unclean creatures and foul things within it, and the fiat went forth to him, Arise, Peter, kill and eat. Not so, Lord, I have never eaten anything common or unclean. Call thou not common or unclean that which God hath cleansed. So when the divine mind of the Christ is restored and the carnal mind has blinked out, when the nirvanic fires have actually created an annihilation pattern upon all that is banal and carnal in man. When the transmutative fires have performed their perfect work and man stands forth once again, clothed upon with his right mind, the mind of Christ and the swaddling garments of life which originally gave him birth, then at that blessed moment the Son of God appears. And when the Son of God appears, all that is in man must of necessity reflect the glory that is perceived. For by the power of perception, man is able to meet the Lord in the air. By the power of perception, man is able to raise the holy prayer of return to the heart of God. The will of God, the divine intent, creates the useful cosmic bent, whereby the old and useless acts are all returned. This is a fact. I come to you in his own name to ask that you should claim his flame for yourselves, the sacred fire, the cosmic will, the cosmic desire. Will you seek it now and understand that God commands in this fair land when e'er the soul responds to him and recreates desire to win? I, Cusco, mindful of the transcendence of his light, mindful of the flame that burns within the heart of the brotherhood, am able to see tonight the activities that are going on throughout your own beloved America, and we are witnessing how the powers of darkness are acting throughout various racial groups in manifestation, how they are acting 
in the various youth groups of the world seeking to create the seeds of anarchy and revolution whereby the beauty of the original concepts that have flowered in America here, which actually embody many most wonderful similes and allegories, should cease and vanish from the earth. They would replace it by the discord and jangle of their own octaves. They would replace it by chaos and by disorder. They would replace it by communal interests that lacked the flame of the divine intent and would ultimately bring this world under the hammer and the sickle of domination of the red dragon of darkness and shame that would cause mankind to continually war one against the other and the children of God, the children of the sun, the children of light that are clothed upon with a sacred fire, they would be of all people most persecuted and cast into pits to be destroyed by those who are the children of Belial, the children of the sun then, and the cosmic purposes of God would be thwarted and this earth thrust backwards in time over 2,000 years into palls of darkness and medieval concepts that even though the world should manifest the greatest scientific achievements would be an empty and hollow mockery of cosmic purpose and universal grace. I, Cusco, am come then this night in the name of Almighty God to say, let it not be so, let it not be so, let it not be so. Let us tonight call for the arm of God to descend, the arm and hammer of cosmic authority that supersedes human authority. We are dealing now with the white hand of God, with the white arm of God, with the white hammer of his fervent heat made of the sacred fire elements creating the power of universal cosmic malleability whereby it can fashion and shape in man the shape of that which is to come in the heaven world of victory. You, some of you here, were also present with me upon Lamoria of old, Lamaria. You will understand the call of the wind. You will understand the temple of the wind and the meaning of the temple of the wind. You will also understand the meaning of the altar of the sacred fire and you will understand the precious caverns of the air. You will understand the glory of the veins of gold from the central sun spun within the heart of the earth and producing illumination to the planetary body reminiscent of the call that to the earth evokes the elemental response of all nature, come ye back to my heart, saith the fires of the central sun. You will understand then the flow of cosmic law and cosmic ideation that in millenniums and aeons of time does create upon this planetary body a drama of such magnificence as when set to music produces the cadences of the universal heart in mankind and enables the summoning of the universal response to occur within the domain of the mind of man, saturating the mind of man with those fiats of the mind of God that say, be at peace, be at peace, be at peace, for I am here. Be at peace, be at peace, be at peace, for I am near. I am the Lord thy God that will bring thee out of the land of bondage, that will cut the cords, the opposing cords that have sought to bind thee to the body of desire and to senseless activity. I will cut these cords and thou shalt be free. I am the Lord thy God. I am the flame of life that within thee beats thy heart and sustains the activity of purity. This, I say to you, is the voice of God crying within you. I, Cusco, am but repeating the words that he is saying in the flaming temple of your hearts where he seeks to impart to you by the blessed infusion of the hallowed spark of cosmic glowing manifestation the I-O-U-A of the power of the sacred word the lost word echoed to mankind's hearts the word that moves the mountains of adversity by the seed fire of universal faith and perception goeth forth into the earth and produces the miracle of manifest intelligence, the intelligence of the cosmic Christ and the power of his perfection 
which is the light of God within you that sustains that glory and opens up the doorway into octaves of light whereby there is a sundering of the flesh consciousness and the domain of the spirit flashes forth its electronic essence and the sacred power of the grand central sun. The great galaxy opens up, the doorways open up, and you see stepping forth those magnificent cosmic beings clothed with the power of the sun and the majesty of the divine man. And as you behold them, you say unto yourself, there by the grace of God shall I go, for I will walk that grand pathway of light that goeth up through instellar space and moves directly to the heart of God by the impulse of his love. I will move through it and I will see that my experience is upon this star, upon the star Terra. These are only the love embraces of God, the chastenings that God brings to me in the experienced world that he may confer upon me the crown of life and the golden band of holy illumination uniting purified hearts with purified hearts and putting an end to those destructive images of the bottomless pit that have sought to distort the various portions of the human body and have destroyed and sought to destroy symmetry upon earth and have performed the chaotic imaginings of the powers of darkness that because they refuse to put upon themselves the images of the light have sought by competitive and destructive intent to manifest the most distorted and variegated images that could ever be produced, each one seeking to outdo the other in the creation of horror and horrific manifestations. We who are of the light say they have their day and their day will end. They have their day and the light shall defend the cosmic principle of the universal Son of God in the young people of all ages and the purity of heart that is the flame of infinite purpose born in man, born by the angelic host, shall recreate the divine image and we will see mass ascensions whereby the youth of this world, because of their devotion to the sacred cause, will in garments of stainless purity, in garments of white light, stand upon the summits and hillsides of the world in a semicircle and a circle closed. These shall then many times ascend en masse as Jesus did from Bethany's hill, and you will see a fulfillment of the prophecies of God from ancient times will be fulfilled now, and a return of these souls to the blessed bounty of the heart of God that was the eternal purpose in the beginning of time will once again be accomplished for all and now rest at peace, blessed heart, simply because I have raised the level of the heat element in the room does not mean at all that you are going to melt away, for we are only seeking to melt away some of that which you might term mortal obesity of the mind, for individuals are often captivated by ideas which are enervating to the sons of heaven in the angelic host. And as we seek to draw nigh and bring to you the bounty of our blessing, it is necessary that we also shall cause those destructive elements to fade away from your world at least temporarily. And oh, how we would love to do it permanently for you if you would only permit us. But so many people will not do it. They insist upon having their own will, their own way, their own desires, their own manifestations. They are concerned only with invoking those things which they wish to invoke, and most of these desires are very small indeed. So tonight, as I seek to bestow my blessing upon you, I say, let us have a few strains of sweet music that during the movement of those bars of sweet music, the angelic host may give those of you who have invoked the peace of God and freedom from outer world distress, may convey it to you in the bounty of the God flame and the flame of universal happiness and felicity. For the brotherhood are here. Many of the brotherhood from the retreats of the world are standing in the atmosphere directly above this property, and they are ready to radiate from the palms of their hands and the flame of their heart the energies of their life that you may know momentarily the peace that one day God will bestow that he stands ready to do today but that is delayed to you in manifestation only by reason of the necessary experiences which must come to you in order that you shall be fashioned wholly in his image.
and the cosmic choirs our thanks, our gratitude in the expression of the universal love. We are the passionate music of the soul as it seeks to find wholeness and reunion above. For the earth is enfolded by the cosmic purposes of God, and even when men are caught in the nets of delusion, the principle, the eternal principle in the cosmic doorway stands before them all. But they do not hear the still small voice that bids them open wide the door. They do not hear the master's voice. They sense our word no more. For darkness reigns in mortal souls and flames of God blow out because mankind in mortal toil does cosmic law then flout. We say to all of you, the children of the sun whom we desire to kindle once again in the universal flame, the radiance of his face, the radiance of the hope that that face engenders anew in you will also enable you to understand the meaning of our brotherhood. We bid you not come to a kingdom of darkness or a kingdom of shame, but to come to a kingdom of light where the glorious understandings that are conveyed will enable you to be masters of self and masters of men. We will cause you to understand the meaning of ancient masonry, the building of the Lord's temple, the building of holy and perfect lives, the understanding of the universal plum the descending of the lifeline from your presence, the understanding of the universal scales of balance, the understanding of the outpictured radiance that is the cosmic square, the arch of triumph and the majesty of the eternal lost word. We would bestow upon all the vestments of the acolyte, the vestments of he who will pass through from darkness unto light. We would bestow upon all the journey to the east. We would bestow upon all the universal cosmic feast, the sacred Eucharist, flame of fire, a cosmic law, tis God's desire that's born in souls that win for him their laurel wreaths, their victory over sin and darkness, all that steals the light. Man will understand he must renew his soul for daily flight away from all that is of earth and earthy doings into cosmic realms where clouds of glory shew forth a radiance man has not known, but for which man has longed. I, Cuzco, child of the sun, I, Cuzco, of old, who have reigned over the islands of the sea, according to universal decree, I, Cuzco, who understand and know King Neptune well, I, Cuzco, who am, am well remembered in South America and honored there, speak to you today 
Will you join me in raising a holy prayer to God for the freedom of this land and all lands? O oh, infinite and eternal Father, the hearts of the children of men have grown dark and the tomb of matter and materiality has enclosed around them now. We ask in the name of the living Christ that upon Good Friday, the angelic host that actually rolled away the stone from before the doorway of the tomb, producing the empty tomb and the risen Lord, will once again invoke the flame that of old went forth and produce the miracle by cosmic law in youth and age alike, cause them to turn in divine delight to holy laws, awaken them to sense of love and sense of brotherhood, restore the boundaries of thy kingdom here, and bless them one and all. Oh, bless them good. They are the children of the law, the sons of Aaron's rod. They are the true Israelites that follow toward the promised land, the pathway Moses trod. They seek deliverance to follow Christ. They are the sons of Messiah, radiant. They are the children of the sun. They go forth to win the law, the one, and they are blessed by cosmic law. Their souls encouraged, they go forth anew. We bless them ever in our flame. We bless the many and the few and call out from the nations of the world those souls in whom thy seed is buried and to whom thy fiat now is hurled. Hear ye the word of the Lord. Return and rebuild my temple. Rebuild my temple in your lives. And as you do it well, rebuild the temple from the skies, the temple of victory's magnificent bell, the song of liberty over the land that brings to man the law's command, be still and know that I am God, and God within you rules by rod of power. He gives to you in hand that is right the wisdom of the law's own might to dispense the truth within the frame, the tenement that houses his flame. Your bodies are the temple of God and your character must be builded by that law, the law of universal love and universal peace. Thus shall all nations Understand the fiat, beat your swords into plowshares and your spears into pruning hooks. Till the land and make it great, noble and grand. Follow the law of cosmic fate, not some willy-nilly, will-o'-the-wisp concept that comes from psychic realms, but understand the truth that comes from highest realms the realm of the spirit of the Lord, that is the spirit of liberty, that now tonight goes forth into the land to utter its fiat, if men will hear and will return to me. Thus saith the Lord, I will make this a land of delight and the joy of the nations, and I will bring men from the far corners of the earth here to see the universal mother revealed in the cult of the mother and the divine man-child produced as the chemicalization of cosmic law and the building of the 12 foundation stones of the new Jerusalem in mortal substance and form to be raised up to meet God in the air and see the new Jerusalem then reborn. I, Cusco, in the name of God, have conferred upon you an initiation of sorts which to some will become real this night and to others will gleam as a cross of beauty in the light of their souls to give them hope through all the days to come, to follow the Lord all the days of their life and to take delight in his law. His law is the law of his comfort and grace. In his holy name and in the bonds of brotherhood and peace, 
I salute each one of you with the flame of my peace and the grace that brought me unto you. So be it. It is done. I come to speak to the hearts of those who may at times doubt the existence of the higher octaves of light as they see the crass manifestation of mortal carelessness. I come to speak to those full of faith that I may strengthen the bonds of that faith that I may bring the communication of higher octaves into manifestation here below. You seem at times to feel that you are quite alone, and I think perchance if you could obtain a greater sense of the presence of the angelic host, that you would realize that you are never alone when you want or desire to obtain celestial help. For when there is a breathing call from your hearts or minds, spoken or unspoken, even the breath of desire for assistance from higher octave, we, one or all, are there. According to the need, so do we descend and manifest. When the problem is tiny and it seems that you can believe, perhaps less of us may manifest, expressing our grace and our love. But when there are impedimentia existing in your world, when clouds of mortal tension and darkness generated by untutored minds seeks to cast its pall over the place where you are to cause you to feel a sense of heaviness or despair. Then we come, our little flames blazing brightly, descending through the air, sometimes in formation, and then again just as you do here, trooping together to render what assistance we are able. And oh, how mightily, beloved ones, is the assistance given to you when you are able to sense our reality, when you are able to grasp that we exist, for that creates a very special bond a very special bond indeed. At last, 
mortal man has recognized us and we are so eager to seize his hands that sometimes many of us will clasp our hands around his hands all together and at once. This may create little tickling eddies of emotion that flow over your whole being as though you were sticking your feet into a cold mountain stream or your hands. You will feel a ripple of our love and our compassion for there are so many of us that it is almost possible for the agnostics to sense us. At least, whether they will acknowledge it or not, there is a manifestation, and it did happen. It is so easy for individuals to forget spiritual experiences after they have passed. It is like some of the events that take place in your world. You promise yourself at the moment that you will never forget the loveliness of that moment. But you do, because there is such a crowding in of events to mortal lives, that there are times when individuals have called to us for clarification of their life streams. They need the flame of cosmic purity to descend into their world and to make amends for all of the crowding in of mortal density and feelings of oppression and fear. Do you know, blessed ones, that fear herself is one of the most awful enemies that mankind has? For fear is self-generating, and individuals seem, because of human momentums attained of old, prone to accept the weight and heaviness of dire predictions for themselves or others. We desire so much tonight to alleviate these conditions, to let you feel the ever-surging love of God that comes through our hearts in our service to mankind. Will you then accept that we are real? Will you accept the surge of God's love through us, even as his love beats your hearts? Do you understand, precious ones, that the Spirit of God is far too great to be contained in any one body temple until that temple has ascended itself out of the socket of human density into the octaves of light where a greater portion of the divine can flow in and contact with the absolute become a reality. But even then, it requires the passing in many cases of aeons of time before individuals are able to assimilate all of the great outreach of infinity associated just with one solar system, not to speak of the universe. For there are mysteries and circles and wheels within wheels of cosmic knowledge. Do you realize, blessed ones, the great mystery involved even in a little cell or an atom? One day men will learn that even electrons themselves are actually miniature universes containing within themselves gigantic programming of cosmic light intensity in varying states which conveys into manifestation the desire of God. The little dancing electrons that seem but tiny flames, they can be broken down and actually in higher octaves of light, we have a saying that nothing is too small that cannot be filled with God. Is this not a wonderful saying? And does it not in some way breathe a breath of hope into your consciousness when you at moments feel that you are perhaps too small to have the allness of God present within you? It is not a question of mortal ego, blessed one where individuals can say that I have God and you do not. It is a case of where individuals can accept their birthright and understand that in due course of time, all of the blessed universe will be made known unto them. But there is some validity and value, is there not, in the mystique of God 
in the holding back of various prizes of cosmic grace from the view of the Ascendant One. For this makes interesting the drama of life as it moves along the road through the spatial and time dimensions. One time you will reach a point in your spiritual development where you will have a burning desire to let go of all segments of time and all segments of space. But beware of that moment, for then is the time when you must realize that not my will but thine be done. For even when individuals have a desire to let go of all things, they must recognize the wonder of cosmic responsibility. Do you not think that for those of us who have acted almost as a confessor for mankind, having stood by them in their hours of pain, that we would not or could not be bored by the repetitious human densities which we see repeated over and over again? Do you see then how that faithfulness to cosmic duty propels us ever onward so that we continue to render our service even when it is already known to us from the beginning just what the ending will be? You will develop as you move along the road of spiritual life that type of patience that will enable you to truly possess your souls. You will develop the wonder of that patience that understands that to serve lesser parts of life and help them to draw forth and magnetize divine grace is a blessing of cosmic redundance. It enables you yourself ultimately to actually find that the blessing of givingness is far greater even than the so necessary receiving. For you must receive if you are to give. Nevertheless, the key to your receipt of all things is your giving of all things that are within the domain and trust of yourselves. For you are all stewards of the mysteries and graces of God, and his love is within you, a power that seems to exceed the dimensions of an individual life. Many times as we gaze upon you, individuals embodied here upon this planet, and take measure of the accomplishments of some of you, not, of course, accomplishments made without assistance, but accomplishments made nevertheless by one life stream. We are almost overawed from higher octaves of light to realize how the power of God can and does work through the individual, to cause him, when he desires to do it, to render a most transcendent service to life everywhere. Will you then cease to limit yourselves? and recognize the power of God to multiply his grace unto you? Will you realize that the multiplication of his grace is ever attunement with the angelic host who are able to seize or take one of your desires out into the universe and the lifeline of that connecting thought can then be tied to your own life stream while we go out and try to produce the miracle that your heart desires for you? Do you understand that when we find that the task is just a little too much for one angel, that we seek and search out another who is free for the moment to render some specific service to life? And so there are times when we have whole legions of angels that are actually engaged in the service of one little life stream upon the planetary body. Do you see then why the Master Jesus said, Know you not that I could call presently, and my Father would also send more than twelve legions of angels? He did not say that he could call immediately. He said presently, for there is always the beauty of cosmic law that allows an angelic being to finish one task before beginning another. But there are generally many of us who are free to respond to the calls of mankind. For like the elementals, we are legions. And besides mankind, who seem to actually almost be a billowing cloud of human life streams upon the planet, we are far greater in number. And the services we render are far beyond the ken of most mortal minds. Yet we stand today and always 
ready to pour out the abundance of our love upon those hearts that so tenderly long to express more grace to their fellow men. One of the problems of humanity today that is such a problem of great intensity and almost at times turgidity is the problems of human emotion governing various dogmas. Individuals are so frightened sometimes lest they should be wrong about something which they believe. And rather than let go of a mistaken idea, they clutch it because it was handed down to them by their father or mother or some dear friend and because they have believed it for so long. Well, would it be then if individuals all over the planet could actually have a spirit of receptivity and a willingness to let go of all archaic ideas which are not in correct context with the divine lexicon. But let me say unto you tonight that the logos and the spirits of the Lord God manifesting in the angelic host, for we are ministering spirits of his bands, are ever ready and willing to bear with mankind patiently until they are ready to let go without fear, in complete fearlessness of all of their feelings concerning the intents of God toward them. Do you remember the words of the great master Jesus? Fear not, little flock. It is the Father's good pleasure to give you the kingdom. In that very statement you can find now and always the consolation that it is the intention of God to bestow every good and gracious gift upon you. But mankind are prone because of their feelings of fear that actually have been fed by mortal men who have thought that they did the will of God. Fear of fire burning them, fear of torment through the ages. They do not understand that this actually would not be the content of heaven to condemn mankind to a life of misery and destruction, particularly so when many times individuals act in almost total ignorance of the great law and wedded to those traditions which have not given them their freedom through the century. We come then this day to encourage the hearts of those who at times are so moved by desire for those that they love to have them accept some tentative truth which has become so dear unto them. We want to tell you, learn to let go. Learn to let go of any feeling of fear about that individual. For there is a tendency on the part of your fears for them lest they should fail to accept the truth you have that creates an actual flutter in their world. It is a sort of a magnetic activity, an activity where they are drawn momentarily to the greater light you seek to give to them, and then the impulses and momentums that they have generated in their own world will pull them downward, and so there is a flutter, one moment up and the next down, and it creates a clickety-clack as though it were a telegraph key hinged at one end and flipping back and forth. Do you understand that this is a jangle of discord that is not the desire of God? It does not propel them in either direction. Will you learn then to summon the faith that can commit them to God and let go? And then make your calls to Archangel Michael and the great cosmic beings to assist you. As you understand the power of beloved mighty Astraea, with her cosmic circle and sword of blue flame, to completely encircle these individuals and cut them free from the banal influences that have held their lives in bondage for so long. Then when you ask Archangel Michael and his beings of faith to descend and bring them the power of an indomitable faith which you have, that God is able to supply their every need, it will assist your loved ones mightily in entering into the same spirit of rejoicing and faith that you have. Do you understand, blessed ones, how magnificent this activity is and how different it is than the clutching activity that, born out of fear, continually calls unto God out of fear for these loved ones and regrets so much that they do not accept that which you have to offer them. When you accept this then that I have said to you tonight and let them go into the hands of God, they will sense it. And it will mean an end to the pulls, the magnetic pulls that you are exerting upon them, benign though they may be in intent. 
and it will permit them to come under the domination of heavenly spheres of influence that can then, in a much greater way, help to cut them free from those undesirable qualities. And if, precious ones, they do not perchance move along just as fast as you think they should in accepting some of the truths that you love so dearly, understand that you yourselves have not always moved along exactly as fast as your own spiritual mentors have desired. Therefore, the ascended masters have exercised what amounts to almost infinite patience towards some of the chilas, for there has been, perchance at times, great recalcitrance on the part of very fine life streams who have continued to cling tenaciously to those undesirable qualities which have actually done them harm to both body and mind. We want you to understand, then, that there is a great benefit in letting go of the sense of struggle. As your beloved Saint Germain has said, that it is the sense of struggle that makes the struggle. So you can find that by letting go and letting the transcendent peace of God move the human tumult out of your world, you can then feel the vibrancy of his peace. You can feel the vibrancy of his joy. You can feel the surge of cosmic strength pouring into your world and actually creating a great reservoir of cosmic light substance into your world. When that light substance begins to magnify and generates its own momentums within your force field and you come in contact with others, there is always the possibility of what we call the leap of the spark, whereby a touch of your hand or a pat upon the shoulder or a little smile or a twinkle in your eye will convey some of the magnificent angelic radiances which we bestow upon you unto them, and thus you will find that there is actually a most transcendent activity of light that is being buoyantly passed out into the world through your own blessed life streams. How joyous it is then when individuals will consider and ponder to think upon it mightily that they are a stone, a lively stone in the temple of God, a stone not only of generation to produce offspring for this planet, which is also vitally necessary for some, but also a spirit of regeneration, whereby the cosmic universal Christ can be magnified and the whole lively building come alive in the power of God to open its doors, the doors of its heart, to the angelic hosts, and the cosmic immensities of our grace which we so long to bestow. Won't you understand this in your feeling world tonight? Won't you accept it so that the angels that came with me, the angels that also listened to your requests, can grant them tonight and help you to move mightily forward in the spirit of the resurrection flame? Won't you realize that the spirit of the resurrection flame is a tangible offering of God? Won't you accept the idea that right now God is encircling this class with the spirit of the resurrection flame that raised Christ from the dead? Won't you understand that this is the power that in your own life can change your lives, raising them from darkness even to the light, raising you out of all the human doldrums that mankind have permitted and acceded to into the transcendence of the fires of the Spirit? Oh, precious ones, this is not a rhetorical question. It is an important question, an important question in the eternal sense. It is a question that when it is properly answered, puts your lives in the hands of God. We do not ask that you submit to us. We do not ask submission in any way of your energies to us. We simply ask that you submit to your own divine God presence and understand that we are servants of your presence, servants of your presence that desire to continue to serve every day of our lives, and that is forever, so that we can help to create the foreverness of God in your lives. For the resurrection flame is the power of immortality. It is the power of buoyancy. It is the power of joy. It is the power that strips the layers of darkness from your worlds. And it is the power of God unto salvation. 
to everyone that believeth. And when men do not believe, they simply set about in their worlds the forces, the flow of the forces of inertia, of indecision. And so they stultify and their imaginations become dull and they wonder what is the purpose of life. We who understand it, who see the great cosmic sheaths as they descend through the sunlight air, we who stand listening beside the bedsides of children, we who hear their prayers, we who understand the heart of God and carry golden cords of connecting intelligence throughout the universe, we understand what this is all about. It is no mystery to us, and we would convey it also unto you, so that the meaning of avatar, the meaning of life, the meaning of angel, the meaning of archangel, the meaning of cosmic being, the meaning of I am, the meaning of you, can be actually cognized by you, each and every one. And then, oh, what an intensive body we will have. What a vital body to work through. How much more we can do for the little children as they extend their hands in loving prayer. How much more we can guard the children of this earth as you become lively stones in the temple of God. Won't you ponder now this night as you go to your beds and to slumber, to commune inwardly with God, the things that I've said to you, won't you ponder how the resurrection flame can actually tangibly flow through the nerves of your body, through the neurons of your brain, how the vital intelligences of God released by the angelic hosts can stop the hordes of evil and seal the door where evil dwells. Won't you understand how the great cosmic word, the infinite logos, can pour out the essence of its sweet perfume upon your lives, making you cognizant always of his love, the love of God that comes through the sunlight air, whether it is day or night, and carries to everyone the power of the angels in flight, angels of divine delight, pouring out their flames of meaning to the fullness of the God intent. Won't you understand the way the soul is bent, a soul destined for a flight to higher realms of God delight? Oh, precious ones, receive you then the blessing of the angelic host. Receive the blessing of our love as we pour it out tonight and try to sense that which is behind the sound of our voice, that which is behind our presence here, Try to sense the reality, the tangibleness of our reality and the grace we seek to convey to each and every one of you. Will you now tonight hold your hands out before you as hands to receive the little talismans we seek to drop into those palms outstretched? Talismans for the soul, a morsel of cosmic light, a little token from an angel who listens. Will you accept it now as my gift to you and understand that it is real? My peace I breathe upon you. 